And again, we want to hide our jacket piping because we're going to change the temperature of our carrier piping. So again, on the segment tab, I'll uncheck show for segments D and E. And I'll select segments B and C from the input grid. And I'll come up to the modify ribbon tab under properties. Let's select operating P slash T, operating pressure and temperature. And in here, I'm going to change the temperature to negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit. This is just going to change the temperature for the selected piping, which is our carrier piping. And I can click OK. Again, we see the valve and flange warning. We can click OK. So we can clear our selection by coming up to Select Clear. We can close the input grid, and we can review the uh, operating temperatures by coming to our show ribbon tab under color plots let's select operating temperature and click OK so we see our negative 58 degrees throughout our carrier pipe and then under the show ribbon tab from the show grouping let's select segments this will now show the jacket piping as well and so you see the jacket piping is 160 degrees Fahrenheit Again, matching the image on page 28 of the workbook. When you're done with your color plots, you can select Reset Show Options from the show ribbon or Clear under the color plots grouping of the show ribbon to get back into input mode. Our next step is to set up some loading conditions by applying a buoyancy load and setting up our analysis sets before we run our analysis. The buoyancy load will only be applied to the carrier pipe sections inside of the jacket. So we're going to split our segments a bit to make that application correct because buoyancy loads can be applied on a segment basis. So once again, we are going to hide the jacket piping. Again, if I open my input grid, I can do that by unchecking show for segments D and E. And I'll close my input grid to see it a bit more clearly. And I want to select point C2 as my active point. And I want to put a small run point very near to this where I can split the segment. I don't want to split it directly at the valve. So I'm going to come to my insert menu and insert a run. And I'm going to make the length 0 0.01 feet. And I'll click OK. So that creates point C17, which is very near my uh, C2 point, and that's where I'll split my segment. So I can do that by coming up to Home. Under the Operations grouping, there's a Segment pull-down menu, and I can select Split Segment. One thing that can be really useful as we work with segments is to turn on the Show Segments color plot. So let's come over to the Show Ribbon tab, and under Color Plots, let's select Segments. So we can see how we just split the segment that so that this valve is separate from the rest of our header carrier pipe. And we want to do the same thing on the other side. So let's come over and select F10 as our active point. In order to insert the point in this direction, we first need to reverse the segment direction. So from the Home Ribbon tab, under the Operations grouping, from the Segment pull-down menu, let's select Reverse Segment. And now we can insert a point. So we'll come back to the Insert Ribbon tab. Under Piping Components, let's select Run. And again, this run point will be 0, 0.0 feet from my current point. So I can click OK. This creates point F15, which is where I'll split this segment. So coming back to the Home Ribbon tab, Operations Grouping, Segment pull-down menu, I'll select Split Segment. 
So now I've split the carrier header pipe that's within the jacket from the carrier header piping that's outside of the jacket. And I want to do the same thing with my branch line. So I'll select my point B4 as my active point. I'll insert a run, make the length 0 0.01 feet, and click OK. And I'll split the segment by coming to my home ribbon tab under the operations grouping, the segment pull down menu, I'll select split segment. So we want to apply buoyancy to segments G and H. So I can load that buoyancy load by coming to my loads ribbon tab and under environmental selecting buoyancy. The water surface elevation of the buoyancy will be at 40 inches. All of this piping will be underneath it, but it will only be applied to certain segments. The specific gravity of uh, the crude oil that the carrier piping is within is 0 0.876. We'll leave the rest as defaults and click OK. So right now my buoyancy is applied to all of my piping, but I want to adjust that by opening my input grid and selecting my segment tab. And we now see this buoyancy load here that we can uncheck for segments B, C, D, E, and F. We only want to apply buoyancy to segments G and H, the carrier piping within the jacket. And we can also update the line number to be clear on what this is representing. So segment B is actually now outside carrier B, outside meaning it's outside of the jacket. Segment C is outside carrier C. And segment F is outside carrier F. Segment G is carrier G or inside carrier G, whatever you'd like to name it. And segment H is carrier H. So it's helpful to kind of update your line numbers with either the real line number or some notes like this to let you know what the piping is representing. Okay, with that, we're ready to set up and run our analysis. So we can close our input grid. From the show ribbon tab, we can select reset show options. And from the show ribbon tab, we can select to show all segments. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.